Hello and once again to the Omega Knight Incorporated show. <laughs> and today, since you clicked on this video, you should already know. Today, I'm going to be talking about another one of my favorite, favorite tournament decks that you can now buy very cheaply. Is Yosinju's. Now, my deck might not be 100% meta based because now a lot of people are playing the Pendulum deck. But rest assured, I still have the Pendulum tech in this deck. So, without further ado, let's start with the deck profile. First and foremost, I play three Yosinju uh, Izongs. Now, Yosinju Izong is a wind four star beast warrior with 800 attack and 1200 defense. All right, and its effect is that once per turn during the end phase, if this card was normal summoned this turn, return it to the hand. You can use each of the following effects of Yosinju uh, Izong once per turn. Uh, the first one is you can discard this card this turn. Your opponent cannot activate card effects or effects when a Yusenju monster is normal or special summon. The other one says if you control another Yusenju, you can draw a card. Uh, once again, self-explanatory. The fact that you can stop monster effects from preventing you from normal or special summoning Yusenjus, and the fact that you can also draw a card if you're already if you're if you've already went through the advantage is excellent. Now, the other thing that a lot of people know about Yusenjus is that during the end phase of the turn that they're normal summon, they get returned to the hand. Um, we all know that that is on a lot of these cards. So what's going to happen is I'll say the effect of they return to the hand when they do that for the monsters that do that. And y'all should already know. But for those that are new to the channel, to Yu-Gi-Oh! period, um, I'm going to do that just for you new guys. So you experts and everything, you know, don't, don't, don't shame on the new community. All right. So the next thing that I run is three Yusenju comma ones, which once again in Yusenju's is a staple. This is also one of the ones that's... Um, this is also one of the ones that, like I said, at the end phase, this goes back to your hand after it is normal summoned. Alright, now, his effect reads that... His effect reads that if this card is normal summoned, you can immediately after uh, this effect resolves normal summon one you, you send you monster from the hand except for another karma one. If you control another you send you monster, you can target one face up card your opponent controls, return it to the hand. This effect can only be used once while this card is face up on the field. And as I said before, once per turn during the end phase, if this card was normal summon, this turn is returned to the hand. So, <clears throat> this wind four star beast warrior with 1600 attack 500 defense card literally is once again one of the staples of the card one of the staples of you send deck building period just like um their his brother or sister don't know the the sex um which is your send you common number two now you send you common number two is a wind four star beast warrior with 1800 attack and 200 defense. He's kind of one of the main beaters of the deck. And he basically has the same thing as comma one, where once again, if it's normal summon, you can special, you can normal summon another you send you monster um, that can be normal summon except itself. But this one says this car can attack your opponent directly. And if it and but when it does using this effect the battle damage you inflict to your opponent is halved and then once again it gets bounced back because it was normal summon this turn uh, last but not least in the in the comma series is 
your Sinju comma three, which once again is another win four star beast wear with 1500 attack and 800 defense. This guy, once again, like I said before, has basically the same effect of his brothers, which is if he's normal summon, you get the normal summon another you send you monster from the hand except himself. But when another you send you monster you control inflicts damage to your opponent, you can add one you send you card from your from your deck to your hand. Now, the reason why this guy, once again, just like his brothers or sisters, don't know their don't know their sex. <laughs> is that this guy literally makes it so that any you send you card, whether it be magic trap or monster card, you can get to your hand every time your comma your send you comma two, his his brother right there, um, or I'll say his family, his family right there, um, and for the Spanish people, La Familia, uh, <laughs> they. Um, every time he attacks directly, his effect basically gets to go off to allow you to get the cards that you need to stop your opponent from doing any extra shenanigans. Um, these are really good staples in the build. And that is really all I have to say about that. Now, next is... You'll send you. Next, I run three. You'll send you two. Kick. Oh my God, I'm I'm butchering this name. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this is your send you T. I'm gonna spell it out for you. It's T S U J I K. Um, so that way you can find, you can look it up, but also the description and the prices of all this will be in the description below. So you shouldn't have that fine, uh, hard time finding it. And like I said before in my previous videos, all prices are based on, all prices are based on, um, the TCG player website on, so you'll have, you'll, you'll be able to pronounce it better than me, even though. My producer is uh, still being, still buttoned in, but I digress. <laughs> now, back to, now, back to the, uh, the deck profile. Uh, now, back to what I said, this is you send you, and I'm going to call him T for right now. This is you send you T. He is a win level 4 beast warrior with 100, with, with 1,000 attack and 0 defense. All right? And his effect is during the end phase, if this card was normal summon, this turn return it to the hand. You can only use each of these effects of you send you T uh, once per turn. Their first effect is that during either player's damage step, when you send you monster, you control battles an opponent's monster. You can discard this card. That that monster you control gains a thousand attack into the end phase, aka. Honest or AKA um, Jesus, the black, the name of the black wing dude just flew out of my head. <laughs> but basically, your honestes, your mastered Smiths, all that type of this, you know, hand hand trap, add more attack damage. Your black wing Gladius, um, your black wing Kalut, that's his name, Kalut, and uh, all that. Um, the second effect is that um, you can target one you send you monster on the field and it gains a thousand attack to the end phase. Now th that second effect is only if he's face up on the field, which once again that's more for the that's more for the noobs than it is for the experienced players. All right. Next, I run three. You send you seat. Shinju L's. I do run the other ones, but I I I run them in the side deck. The reason why you really want him in your main deck is because of his effect. Now, the difference between the other you Shinjus is that this you Shinju here is still a win four star, but he is a rock pendulum monster with zero attack 
and 2100 defense. You're not summoning this, you send you monster. And here goes why you're not summoning this, you send you monster. And that is because of the fact of his pendulum effect. The real reason why I run him more than I run R, which you'll see when I get into my extra deck, is because there's a pendulum effect. And his pendulum effect is that if if a Yusenju monster you control will be destroyed by a battle or a card effect, you can destroy this card instead. Um, because this deck really doesn't rely on pendulum summons like uh, other decks do, even though you can play a pendulum-based build, which is, like I said before, which is something that's happening in the meta. Um, I like this build because it's a lot quicker and it's more attack-focused. It's more attack-and-retreat-focused. Um, now, uh, since you're not doing anything with his pendulum scale, per se, his pendulum scale is 3, for those who, once again, uh, want to know. Um, also, his monster effect that you're never going to probably use if you're playing this, this build right, um, is that his monster effect is that if this card is normal summon, change it to defense position. Your opponent cannot target you, send you monster you control with card effects except this one. Now, you're more worried about your Yusenjus being destroyed on your opponent's turn than you really are worried about card effects because your Yusenju monsters literally are going to are gonna be floating back into your hand. Um, I, I, also, I say that you can summon this if you're trying to do uh, different shenanigans or, once again, you're shifting into the Pendulum build. But I really say that the pendulum effect is the best effect because, like I said, it protects you on your turn to swarm the field and kill your opponent, which is really what you send you do the best. Now, that concludes the monsters of the deck. Now, we're going to go into traps. Now, my trap lineup is very simple and very easy. Um, it's a lot more traps than a lot of other decks you're probably going to see, uh, during my series, but we, but once again, because you do not have any monsters during your opponent's turn, you really need to have a lot of back row to prevent them or make them think twice about trying to attack you. So for me... I like to run a lot of different versions of stuff. So, first things first that I like to run is I like to run two Dry Mirror Forces. Dry Mirror Forces effect is very simple. Uh, if your opponent if your opponent declares a direct attack, all face up attack monsters, attack position monsters, your opponent controls gets bounced back up into their hand. Or their extra deck if they're using if they're attacking you with extra deck monsters. After that, Whoops, my bad. Drowning is shuffling. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Drowning is shuffling them back. Uh, I run two mirror forces, which basically destroys them all. Storming is the one that bounces them back to the hand. I kind of get these confused because, like I said before, I normally use these all three in conjunction with each other because they run so well together. And if you ever want to run... M mirror force launcher which is another cool card if you're ever running a complete wild mirror force build like i said with a good anti-spell fragrance uh, you know what i'm saying you can really do some cool stuff um basically that's what these are for these are literally to set these up for your opponents for your opponent's turn and basically blow them out of the water because nine times out of ten you're not going to have any monsters on the field um, then I run two Torrential Tribute, which is literally when your opponent summons a monster. I don't care if it's Special Summon, Ritual Summon, whatever. He summons a monster. She summons a monster. Um, or it, if you're playing a robot in the future. <laughs> if you're playing a Yu-Gi-Oh! robot in the future. Um, no matter what, when your opponent summons a monster, you flip this. It destroys all monsters on the field. And since... During your turn, you ain't going to have no monsters on the field. They're all going to go away. 
and it'll leave you for next turn when you can swarm the field again, which, like I said previous, is what you send you's like to do and destroy your opponent. All right. Last but not least, I play three of my favorite card of this deck, and that is three your Sinju secret move. Now, uh, your Sinju secret move once again is one of my favorite cards because it is a counter trap, and your Sinju secret move effect is awesome and here goes what this effect does it says when a spell or trap card or a monster effect is activated while you control at least one you send you card not you send you monster one of the reasons why the pendulum thing is becoming more prevalent is because these even work if the if you're using the the pendulum that's the reason why i use l you send you l to to more in the pendulum zone than i want to summon it um, so back to what I said, while you control a pendulum card, all face-up monsters you control uh, are you send you monsters. Yeah, and all face-up monsters you control are you send you monsters. Negate the activation. Negate the activation if you do destroy that card. So basically, um, if you have you send you monster, you don't necessarily need to have one. You just while you control at least one you send you card. And all of your you send you monsters you control or, or uh, all the face up monsters you control you send you monsters, you'll be able to basically negate. This is basically like Infernity Barrier and any kind of card that 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 does that kind of negation to protect other stuff on the field and basically to protect you on your turn. And then last but not least for the traps, I play two. You'll send you sword stings. Um, and basically, once again, it's, it's it's one of the newer cards, and it's one of the newer cards that came out. But it's really a good, powerful card for this deck. Um, and its effect is that if you control no monsters, reveal up to two your Senju monsters with different names in your hand. Then target the same number of face-up cards your opponent controls. Return them to the hand. You can only activate one uh, your Senju Sword Sting uh, per turn. Now, once again, I like this card because there's another card that literally makes it so that you can you can swarm the field next turn and you can get rid of a lot of junk your opponent has on the field to make it so it is a lot easier. I also say you want to activate this card during the end phase of your opponent's turn. I always like to reiterate on certain cards. You want to activate this on the end phase of your opponent's turn before you start your draw phase. That way you can get the best potential, you can get the best, best thing out of this uh, because you're normally going to have at least two you send you monsters in your hand. All right. All right. Now, that concludes the trap cards of the deck. Let's go into the magic cards. All right. Once again, like I said before, you're going to see this card a lot. You're going to see this card a, a hell of a lot in my deck builds. It's one of the it's one of the great unsung heroes, and it's a very old card because, as you can see, uh, for those for those new to the game, back in the day, um, Yu-Gi-Oh cards were actually called magic cards, not spell cards. Um, and since they got in trouble with Magic the Gathering, uh, they had to change them to spell cards. So you could tell this card is super old, and that's probably why a lot of you have not seen it. But you're going to see it a lot in my deck builds. Why? Because like I said before, this card is awesome. Because what this card does is it makes it so you don't necessarily have to blind MST anymore. Also, it also has the ability to get rid of traps that need certain costs to activate and certain time restrictions and, and certain chains to work right. Now, once again, I'm going to explain this effect again. What Bait Dog does is that you... Uh, you activate Bait Doll, uh, targeting a face down spell or trap card. The your opponent flips up the card. If it's a spell card, it gets flipped back face down, and then this and then Bait Doll gets shuffled back in the deck. That's the other reason why it's awesome. If it is not, if it is a trap card, and the trap card 
then is activated if the trap card misses timing if it misses its timing or its conditions are not met basically it fizzles and then it is sent to the graveyard now like I said before and and I'll probably say this every time I show this card is that the reason why this card is so devastating is because this card also force activates those trap cards which means those trap cards that have a cost say like life points discarding whatever they gotta do that now that also means if they don't meet the conditions it fizzles so if you play solemn judgment and I haven't done anything else this do this solemn judgment you gotta pay half your life points and you don't get to negate no monsters being summoned or nothing but I made you pay your life points plus that card gets thrown away and this gets shuffled back into the deck which makes it once again beautiful and that's why you'll always see one of these in my deck next I run two dark holes uh, this is basically the magic version of torrential tribute where once again I activated it destroys all monsters on the field and since you ain't gonna have the monsters on the field nine times out of ten we know who monsters is about to get destroyed next I run three cards from another archetype but works perfectly in this one and that is fire formation tinky now fire formation tinky once again for the 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 new people here uh, what fire fire formation tinky does is that when this card is activated you can target one level four uh, oh, excuse me or lower beast uh, beast warrior type monster from your deck and add it to your hand and then all all beast warriors uh, monster types you control gain a hundred attack uh, you can only activate one tinky per turn now once again 100 a lot of people don't believe that it's not a lot but guaranteed it can be especially if you can get a couple of these on the field and also the fact of being able to search any of your your Sinju monsters to make sure that you can swarm the field easier makes this card great for any truthfully for any beast warrior deck period not just you send you or fire fist which is you know where they're from um, I run two MST's which once again is self-explanatory destroys one uh, uh, magical trap card on the field um, then I run two pot of dualities this is basically one of your major draw cards of the deck and basically what it does is you get to reveal three cards um, then you look at all three of them, you put one into your hand, you shuffle the other two back into your deck, and you, but once you activate it, you can special summon, and since you don't special summon in this, in this version, um, everything is normal summon, and you basically still get to swarm the field, plus you get to get anything you're kind of missing, um, from the deck. And you can also only use this, uh, once per turn. All right. Next, I use one you send you I use one uh you send you wind worship and you send you wind worship is a uh quick play spell. That's what that little symbol is for once again people who are just new to the game. Um and what it does, it says, if you control three or more you send you monster cards with different names, return as many you send you monster cards you control to the hand as possible, and then you can draw until you have five cards in your hand. Uh, you can only activate one you send you worship per turn. Basically, once again, it's just another draw card, but nine times out of ten, you're only going to get to draw two, and that is a lot. Um... You can draw up to four. Um, you you can't you. It would be nice if you could just draw. You know, like up to four. But once again, <sighs> Konami. All right. Then I run two. Uh, Yosin. I run two Yosin training grounds. Now this card has a lot of effects, so give me give me a second uh, to run them all down to you. All right, 
You'll see the train grind is a continuous little the little symbol here, um, the little infinite symbol. It's a continuous uh, spell card, and basically what it does is each time you send you monsters, normal summon, special summon, place one Yosin counter on this card. You can remove any number of Yosin counters from this card to apply the effects. Depending on the number of Yosin counters you remove, you can only use the effect of Yosin training ground once per turn. All right. Um, if you remove one counter, all your Senju monsters you currently control gain 300 attack until the end of the turn, even if this card leaves the field. So once again, make your card stronger, even if this card leaves the field. Uh, you can remove three. If you remove three counters. Uh, you can add one you send your card from your deck or your graveyard to your hand. So once again, this is basically like a Monster Reborn, uh, Recursion, stuff like that. Alright. But to be honest, really what you're getting with this card is you're getting your, your, you're really getting back your Senju T and you'll send you enzyme because basically they're they're hand traps. Nine times out of ten, you're not really getting that much in the graveyard, unless you're doing a lot of link summoning or you're doing a lot of um, exceeds and stuff like that. But we'll get there in a second. Next and the last card of the deck of the main deck is um, Yoshin Whirlwind, which once again is another continuous spell card. And what it does is uh, activate this card by paying 500 life points. Once per turn, if a face-up your Senju monster you control returns to the hand, except during the damage step, you can target one card your opponent controls return it to the hand. During the end phase, unless this effect was activated this turn and was not negated, destroy this card. I only really use one of these because paying a whole bunch of life points to activate a card to me is counterproductive. So that's the only reason why I want I run one. All right, now let's get into the extra deck. And like I said before in the beginning of this video, um, I have the pendulum version in my extra deck. So let's start. First and foremost, I run two. Mayo Senju Diebacks. Okay. And Mayo Senju Dieback is a win level 10 beast pendulum monster with 3,000 attack and 300 defense with a pendulum scale of 7. All right. Its pendulum effect is that when a Yo Senju monster you control declares an attack, you can have that attacking monster gain 300 attack until the end of battle phase, aka more beat. Uh, it's norm. It's monster effect is a is kind of a little bit more why you would probably want to use it, and and that is that uh, cannot be special summon except by pendulum summon. If this card, if this card's pendulum summon cannot be negated. So basically, once again, you, that's another reason why you want a pendulum summon. Uh, if this card is normal or special summon, you can target up to two cards on the field. Return them to the hand. Once per turn during the end phase, if this card was special summon, this turn return it to the hand. As you can see, this is the opposite of what your Senjus do. Um, next, I run two Mayo Senju Hit Two. And uh, once again, this is a, this is once again another, another one of the newer cards. And it is a win level 10, like 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 the other one. Uh, beast pendulum monster with 2,000 attack, 300 defense, with a pendulum scale of three. And what it does, what its pendulum effect is that you can target one you send you card in your pendulum zone, and for the rest of the turn, its pendulum scale becomes 11. AKA once again, why the pendulum thing is starting to become a lot more, a lot more prevalent. Um, I still just, I still really just don't like it as much as the normal summon thing. Um, and I'll tell you kind of why after I finish this description. Um, and basically what it says is that also you cannot special summon, uh, monsters except your Senju monsters, which basically is the whole deck, even if this card leaves the field. During the end phase, return this card to the hand. 
you can only use the only use each of the effects of my you send you uh, hit out uh, once per turn. Now he also has this, basically the same effect of my send you die back, which is it can be it's monster effect is it can be special summon except by pendulum summon, and if this card is normal or special summon, uh, you can target one card your opponent controls, return it to the hand each time a card on the field is returned to the hand or the main deck by your card effect while this card is on the field all you send your monsters you currently control gain 500 attack once per turn during the end phase this card with special summon return it to the hand now one of the big reasons why like I was saying about I don't really trust the pendulum summon is because of master rule 4 master rule 4 slows down in my opinion the pendulum summon deck not to mention that pendulum summon is considered one summoning which means if you sit down and pendulum summon five monsters and they they use anything that can, can negate multiple things like bottomless trap hole uh, for for once again for the the younger crowds or things of that ilk all your monsters are instantly destroyed or taken care of in one foul swoop that's one of the big reasons why I don't like using the the pendulum version of of the of any kind of deck unless it's a 100% pendulum based deck. Um, now uh, back to the extra deck. Next, I run two Sabus, and this is your Sinju Sabu. All right, and your Sinju Sabu is once again he's a wind four star beast war with 1700 attack and 400 defense and he says once per turn during the end phase of this card was normal summon uh this turn return it to the hand you can only use each of the following effects of your senju sabu once per turn the first effect says this card is normal summon uh if you control another you send you card you can add one you send you pendulum monster from your deck to your hand now once again, that is this is the reason why I put them in the side deck instead of the main deck because I'm only running like three you send you, uh, three you send you pendulum monsters in the main deck. When I flip everything over, once again, as you can see, he becomes devastating. The second is that you could target one you send you card you control, place one dizzy wind of the yo send you of the yo send village or yo send whirlwind from your deck face up in your spell and trap zone and if you do shuffle uh shuffle you can shuffle the targeted card into your deck i don't really like the second effect um that's the, another reason why he's in the extra deck but as you can see he's still powerful when you shift over to the pendulum the pendulum uh version of this deck last but not least i you i run in the extra deck, I run two Yo Sinju uh, Sinju R. This is once again the counterpart to Yo Sinju L. And what he does is that he is once again a win level four rock monster with zero attack and 2100 defense with a pendulum scale of five. And basically, what happens is once per turn, if you have a Yo Sinju. Uh, card in your other pendulum zone you can make this pendulum scale 11 until the end of this turn also uh, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except your Sinju monsters even if this card leaves the field which as you can see he's basically a my yo Sinju uh, die back um, by himself and once again that's the reason why he's in the extra deck also his monster effect which again to me is a little bit lackluster but basically it's it's more the same thing which is uh if this card is normal summon change it to the defense position monsters your opponent control cannot target face up you send you monsters for attacks except this one uh once again yes you can put you can put this thing in a lock but since once again we have link monsters that easily trump 2100 and can be summoned so super fast you rarely get to you rarely get to do anything like that if you don't get a bunch of them in their hand. Next, I run three compulsory evacuation devices, um, and this thing is basically self-explanatory. Target one monster on the field, return it to its owner's hand. 
Uh, next, I run one Microcosmos, which basically says that um, any card that is activated or played um, gets banished uh, instead of instead of being sent to the graveyard. Then I run its magical counterpart, which is Dimensional Fissure, which does the same thing, but it banishes all the monster cards. And last but not least, for the side deck is I run two Yosinju. I run two Yosinju Orochi Channeling. And Yosinju Orochi Channeling once again has, has a couple of cool effects. And they're more geared towards pen, the pendulum build, and that's why they're in the side deck. All right, and it says if you control no monsters, activate one of the following effects. Also, for the rest of the turn, after this card resolves, you cannot special summon monsters except your Sinju monsters. All right, uh, the first thing is add one level fire higher your Sinju monster from your deck to your hand. Self explanatory, die back and hit hut. Um, or you could place one you send you L and one you send you R from your deck into the pillum zones, but destroy them during you, your opponent's next end phase. Once again, that's the reason why they are in the extra deck when I want to play the pendulum version. And that concludes the side deck. Now we're gonna get into the extra deck. Now some of these cards um, I'm gonna say um are pretty self-explanatory if they're not um I would definitely I would definitely say look them up because your extra deck can kind of be anything you really want it to so this is what my extra deck is uh first things first is two brotherhood of the fire fist tiger king and basically why he's in my extra deck is because he can get Fire Formation Tinky. Um, and that's why he's there. Then I use one... Um, I use one Castell. And basically, once again, card removal. I use one Dire Wolf. Once again, card removal. I use one Cowboy for Burn. Uh, I use uh, Lightning Chidori once again basically for card removal I use one number 41 basically for once again getting rid of pesky effects so I can get to my card removal I use one Tornado Bird for spell and trap removal and before anyone says hey that card is worth more than three dollars you would be right if it wasn't for um, Dual Devastator coming out in October the 11th, uh, which is, once again, making this card drastically go down. I got this card for only like $2.50. And very soon, it should come out and be about a dollar, which means I'm probably going to get some more because it's a really, really good card. Okay. Um... Then I run one for my link monsters. Then I run one. Oh God, how do you say this this dude's name? Amphibious swarm ship, a blowful whale. That's a lot. That's a lot. But as I said, um, uh, the the all these cards, the, the names and their prices and everything will be in the description below, so you won't have any trouble, uh, just like I did. <laughs> reading this card's name and, and finding one and basically I use this card more or less to you know have a good size beater and to have the ability to get some level uh, level three or lower link monsters I run two uh, firefighting Dharma doll um, basically I run two of these because once again it needs beast wares and two it allows you to get more more advantage because of its effect 
And uh, for those that don't know, it's basically that this card gains 100 attack for each beast, beast where a wing beast on the field. Once per turn, you can target one spell or trap card on, on each field, destroy them. When this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle, you can target one of your beast, beast warrior, or wing beast monsters that is banished or in your graveyard and add it to your hand. Once again, recursion, destruction. I run two great fly because everything in this thing is win, and this guy makes everything uh, that is win get boosted up by 500 points. Uh, it makes everything makes everything this earth go down by 400 and when it dies you get to get you get to add a um, wind monster um, I think you get to add it from your graveyard um, you get to target a wind monster yeah in your graveyard and add it to your hand so once again more and more stuff from the graveyard then I add then I play one uh, win and I'm definitely going to read win to you because win's effect is uh, kind of a little, a little bit wordy. And since I only run one, uh, I'll go on and read it. I can go on and read it to you without picking it back, back up out, out off cam, picking it back up through camera. Uh, basically, um, when the when the wind charmer very uh variant uh she um needs two monsters but one has to be a wind monster that's the reason why i use this um the effect of her is that you could target one wind monster in your graveyard special summon it to a zone this card points to if this link summon card is destroyed by battle or destroyed by opponent's card effect uh while it's in its mo in its owner's monster zones um, you can add one wind monster with 1500 or less defense from your deck to your hand. Um, you can only use each of the effects of wind charmer once per turn. Now, when you play the pendulum version, once again, which makes her really good is you can get dive, you can get, um, I, you can get die back. That's really what makes her cool is because you can get die back because you're going by defense. And you're not going by uh, what you call it. And then, last but not least, I run one Harvest Del. Oh my God! Let me put it like this: uh, His name is the Desperate Doom Eagle. I run one of him, and uh, what he does is he is my 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 link three. He's one of my link threes. And like I said before, he's one of my beater, my beater link threes. And like I said before, he's he's really good for this deck because he needs uh, two or more wind monsters. And uh, those two or more wind monsters give him the ability to, like I said, this card gains 2400 attack. Yeah, this card gains 2400 attack while your opponent has no monsters in their graveyard. AKA once again the reason why I run um the reason why I I run Microcosmos and Dim Dimensional Fissure um is because of that. So once again, you could have a 4800 beater sitting on the field. Um you could target you he has also has a quick effect which is you could target one monster your opponent controls shuffle it into the deck you can only use the effect you can only use his effect once per turn um like i said before as you can see a lot of this is wind based or wing beast um, or beast warrior based some of it has wing beast synergy too if you want to put it in a um if you want to put it in your your wing beast wing beast decks like your harpies or your black wings um you know they can really help you out but once again, that concludes uh, my Yusenju build. Uh, I hope you guys, you know, liked the video and uh, were informed. I'm sorry that I might have rambled and butchered a couple of names, but 
hey, we're human and we all make mistakes. But like I said, I hope that you were informed. I hope you guys take the, the time out to once again, like I say in all my videos, hope you guys take the time out to uh, go out and get this deck. It's really cheap. Uh, that's why it's here in one of my super budgeted series. It's won me a couple of tournaments. This build and the shifting over to the pendulum build has won me a couple of uh, local tournaments uh, throughout the years. Uh, even before the new support has came out. Um, also, like I said, I like to say is uh, please subscribe. I got a lot more. I got a lot more decks um, in real life that I'd like to show you. Um, so I hope you come back for you know more of my quirky way of deck building and uh, quirky way of describing all the cards to you. Also, like I said before, I like you to subscribe. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Um, if you don't mind supporting me, so maybe I can get a you know better camera. I can buy some more cards in real life because I'm not really gonna really do anything with like uh, dual netbook or anything like that. I really want to show you guys cards in real life. So like I said, I really would like to also be able to do this full time. So like I said before, my Patreon link is in the description below. Also like I said, if you need any uh, thumbnails or any kind of artwork done uh, my producer uh, link is in the description below and uh, like I said before so if you need anything there uh, mm -hmm. you can get all that in the in the description below but like I said before this is a really fun deck it swarms really easy it's really good beat down um, and like I said before if you like really fast pace and swarming the field you'll love this deck so, um, like I said, just pick it up because, like I said before, the description, the all the prices based on TCG Player are in uh, the description below. And, uh, like I said, in all my other videos, if you have any comments or anything else you think I should put in or take out or, you know, just make sure that the card is under $3 and uh, I'll definitely check it out. So, like I said, that concludes our show. And like I said before, Omega Knights don't start fights, but we damn sure finish them. And you guys have a blessed day.